overall assessment for the foot and the ankle. So we're going to go from a proximal to a distal, and we're also going to go in the cardinal plane. So we'll start at the mortise joint. So I'm going to come uh, right up into the onto the neck of the talus. I'm going to actively dorsiflex uh, using my body. I'm going to have my uh, Kevin do not shift him down just a little bit. Keep coming. Yep. So then I can really use my leg and then leverage the up and down high low table to get my dorsiflexion. So be like this, and then I can get directly into the mortise. Okay, and then my posterior to anterior. This is a little bit more difficult. I don't really feel like I can adequately get at the mortise joint. So I'm gonna come in and cup the calcaneus as I uh, stabilize proximally at the distal femur or just a tibia. Uh, just be sensitive of their Achilles tendon, right? And that you're not mashing that too much. So I'm providing a counterbalance with my left hand as I'm pulling anterior and almost doing like an anterior drawer on the calcaneus. So the motion is essentially like this. And then if we're gonna try and get uh, essentially a shearing or a medial lateral glide. This would remain the same. And then I'd come in like this and then try and get like a lateral break or a lateral tilting of the calcaneus. And then my phenar eminence is right along the joint line. And once again, I'm creating a counterbalance with my left. You can also get a sense of rotation here. Come from the outside, be similar. The one thing that we we were uh, suggesting with the anterior to posterior, just coming back to that, was if we cross this leg over. Such that we take uh, they like self block themselves at their so their knee doesn't pop, and then I can really get into that. Okay, and then if we come down to the midfoot, uh, a little bit more difficult, especially because we have some sensitive tissues such as the tendon, the extensor tendons, uh, running along the top of the foot, as well as some vasculature. So we want to be sensitive to that as we try and uh, mobilize the midfoot. Uh, I find it easier to start at the navicular. Um, in particular because of its bony prominence. And so here's the navicular tubercle on the medial side. And then if you want to just come around, maybe get a better view. So then we're there. And then I'm going to brace. So that's going to be the joint line. And then I'm going to try and go anterior to posterior or dorsum to plantar. <laughs> You're welcome for that cavitation, right? And then I can also get from my plantar to my dorsum, uh, dorsum like that. Staying along the medial aspect, I just drop down. Uh, now I'm grasping again through the thenar eminence and good pad placement. And I'm looking at how that first ray plantar flexes and dorsiflexes. Okay, and then if I come one more joint, right, so I can distract, pull that little piggy, and then get some uh, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion of it. I can also get a sense of the subtle rotation that needs to occur. And we can get some confirmatory pops and clicks as we go through it, which is good. Um, hallux extension obviously really important for push off and for your athletic based power movements such as pitching or jumping. Okay, and then uh, it's a little bit more difficult uh, to get to the midfoot on the lateral side. Again, once because it, once again because you have those sensitive structures on top, so your hand grip needs to uh, disperse your pressure or hide your pressures. So I'm going to come in uh, with like a lumbar grip. grip. 
Um, so here's the fifth met, which is a good bony landmark. So I'm going to come just distal, or excuse me, just proximal to that with my left hand, and then with my right hand, I'm going to essentially try and dissociate the midfoot joint that is where the first, second, and third cuneiform meet the uh, metatarsals. Again, it's more of a rotation here. I can't get much dorsiflexion or plantar flexion. Uh, people talk about coming in and getting the cuneiform, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, the cuboid. I find that's uh, a little bit more difficult in this case. Um, it's more like a, a key grip or pinch grip as I try and get it like that. I feel like I can get a little bit of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion there. Yeah. And then the other thing that I consider is uh, hind foot versus forefoot dissociation. So I dorsiflex. And then looking at how well they can go into that pronated forefoot position. And then if I cap that, that is the hind foot, and looking at that dissociation. So oftentimes I find if there's a restriction in the hind foot, such as the telecurl or uh, even the subtalar, then they will also demonstrate stiffness here. But then if you address the proximal, uh, I will also often find that that will uh, improve mobility distal to the foot in the ankle.